So guys, welcome back to the shop. Continuing on our, what is beginning to be an RF cable series. I'm going to show you how to crimp a type N connector. Uh, and this happens to be a field, female, I think these are called. Yeah, a female type N connector to an, or any type of N connector, but I happen to have a female one, but the male one is just the same except that the pin is the other way around. This one is hollow, except the male part of the pin, center pin, and this one has a, a tread on the outside, the male one is the other way around. So we're going to start with putting the crimp sleeve over the end, and then we're going to strip the Cox cable. Three turns usually does it. Now we're going to strip it off and ah, this one isn't set up properly. Quite properly at least. And yeah, just if I cut through. Right, so, again, faffing about is optional, but this one isn't set up for this, normally you tune these for your specific cable. So, here we have it, the center conductor, the center isolator, the braid and shielding braid and the outer jacket. So next what we're going to do is crimp this to the outer jacket and I like to cut the center conductor long and sneak up on the right length and just twist in the way. So we go. I would recommend you buy a cable with a solid center conductor because those are so much easier to work with especially outdoors because you have to be really careful not to get these individual strands on the outside of your center pin yeah so that looks good let me take the crimping dies and uh, this one is a hex crimping die with two sizes of inner and outer crimps. So we're going to go for the center one. I think this is dot zero sixty eight. I have no idea what those numbers mean, but it hasn't stopped me before. And yes, we are in the correct. Oh, so clamp down on that, and now it's crimped. So then what I like to do is you know, fan out the, the braid a bit, so that we don't... Because the what main mistake you're going to do in this is that you get a bit of the outer braid stuck on the inside this one. And if it's long enough, it's going to contact the center pin and your connector is going to be absolutely junk. So now we're going to stuff the center pin into the connector from the back end. And then we're going to get it over the center conductor. And we push it home. And we can see it protrudes. And it helps if you have these because some of these are a bit... These are quite good ones, so it doesn't really matter. But if you have a... You know... Uh, it's harder one that doesn't want to slide in so easily then it helps to have a correct one where you can check that the depth is what it should be and I actually happen to have one here this is a panel mount but you can see that or maybe you can't but the center pin protrudes about the same so we're good there and this one was really easy you could actually feel it going in there as it should 
So now we're going to push the sleeve back over. And then we're going to, if you have them that they poke out the sides, you can, you know, give them a bit of a twist around it, it shoulders them up. And then when you push it home, it looks nice and tidy. So then we take the crimping device again. Let's try to do this upside down left handed so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So we're going to put that. Okay. This one seats in the bottom. That means it's probably going to be too large. But let's try it anyhow. Let's try it because we used the bigger center pin conductor hole. So this might be. Oh no. It's going to seat completely without actually doing a crimping. So did make a mark at least, so we take the small and that's basically how you determine which size you need and I'm a bit... you don't want to be really up against you be, want to be close to the connector but you don't want to be really up against it because then you might crimp the actual connector not the sleeve so, and then you just, when you have it push it home and then you let go and you get a nice crimp and as I said in the last video if you want, you can put a bit of heat shrink over this. This is just for adapting a thicker, less flexible cable to an SMA from an N type. And if you're doing a lot of this, I recommend that you, you know, standardize to a couple ones. I use a lot of equipment as SMA connectors, so I need that, but I don't want to faff about with these. And these aren't very mechanically sturdy, so I've just started using end connectors for everything else. So, well, uh, that's it. Oh, as a postscript, uh, just to show you, I did these two connectors. First in the, the SMA video, then the other one, the end connector in the this video. So let's just, you know, test it as I showed you. As in the last video on how to test these connectors. You want to get the right adapter. In this time we have a banana plug to B and C then B and C to N male which we then connect to the female N connector that we just made. And you can see it shows Overload, a complete open circuit. Let's get a probe and just probe the conductor end, and it shows eh, 0.2 ohms, which is basically a complete like lack of resistance, as good as least the meter can go. And it shows up. So that means that the center pin is not shorted to the outer shield, and both the shield and the center conductor is intact all the way, which is what you want. So here we have it a short RG58 adapter cable basically to go from a male N to a male. SMA connector, which is quite handy. I actually make a lot of these. Uh, you would like actually to want to keep these as short as possible, so this is basically good length if you're using RG58 because it has quite a bit of attenuation. The RG58 is not at all a good cable, but for short runs of adapters when you want a thin and flexible cable, it does rather nicely. So, I'm going to chuck this into my bag of tricks or RF adapters and uh, probably use it on some place when I need one. Well, that's it. Yeah. Thank you for watching and have a nice evening.